Welcome. We are streaming live today from Ambassadors Christian Center in Columbia, South Carolina, where our pastors are David and Donna Jenkins. I would like to take the time to welcome everyone who has joined us for our worship service. For our online community, we ask that you take a moment to do three things. One, leave a comment letting us know which city and state you are watching the broadcast from. Two, like and share the streaming with your friends. And lastly, three, like the Ambassadors Christian Center Facebook page so we can stay connected to you. We just finished a wonderful praise and worship time and now it is time to hear the word. The next person you will hear will be our speaker for today. Hallelujah, welcome to our Monday night service. Hallelujah, amen. Yeah. Glory to God. You know, I'm not going to take long. We have a special guest here, and we thank all of you for joining us by way of social media. I believe, not, I know you're going to be blessed uh, tonight in the name of Jesus. And so we thank God for Dr. Mark T. Barkley being here with us in the name of Jesus. I, and as I said, I'm excited that he's here, and I know you're just as excited as I am. You know, um, I'm just going to have him come on up because I want him to get into the word. So without further ado, let's give Dr. Mark T. Barkley an Ambassadors Christian Center welcome in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you, man. Woo, glory. Praise God. Be seated. Isn't it great? Isn't it great to be a Christian? Be in the house of God, serving God. Amen. Now, just in case you don't know us, i just tell you. I'm probably not as, a, 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 as good a preacher as your pastor, but I'm better looking. It's good to be with you. A last, we are last day's believers now. We're climaxing the ages. That's our duty. It's really the assignment of every ministry. It's the assignment of every believer. To make sure that we go to heaven and take everybody with us. Amen. Somebody said, what's the real goal, Doc, to me? What's the real goal about Christianity? I said, escape hell at all costs. Amen. I, don't, I don't understand all the doughboy tinsel preaching that there is no hell. But Jesus Christ defined it pretty good. And I tell you this, man, it lasts as long as heaven. There's no cutoff date to eternal damnation. And thank God for the blood of the Lamb that we've been delivered from that road. Amen. And we're on this road. We're on the road to heaven. I'm so glad about that. Praise the Lord. It's always good to be with you. I love your pastors. Thank God for you. If you're visiting tonight and you don't have a church, then you should hook up with this one. Why, why keep shopping around and bouncing around when you have quality and you're sitting in it? Amen. I always say, listen. You find a holy man, could be a woman, but find a holy man with a Bible in his hand. What else might you be looking for? Stay put. Because this Bible is the instruction manual for living on the planet. Hey, every creator, every manufacturer has a user manual, an assembly manual, and our creator's no different. And so the beauty of your pastor, and I know there's visitors, and of course I, I, I know you, preachers, and I... I but, you know, uh, if we will stick with this, and even if preachers will stick with this, everybody say, we're going to be better than okay. I believe that with all my heart. Praise God. Well, my assignment right now is to make sure that we are ready as the body of Christ for, one, the coming of the Lord, but, two, until that happens, to help our master climax the ages the way that he has designed to do that. We are now, without a doubt, in the last of the last days. We are running out of time really rapidly. Uh, you all look sad about it. You're going to heaven, aren't you? Smile or something. Praise God. I and mean, we're on our way out of here. I just, uh, I told my team and my kids are all grown up. They're preachers. I told my team and my kids, listen, I'm going to tell you right now. If I, if I die on this planet before the rapture and you try to raise me from the dead, you better hope to God it don't work. 
I'm on my way to heaven. It's a whole, I'm not suicidal, don't get me wrong. But that's a whole lot better than anything you can name down here. Praise God. Clap for heaven once. Come on, we're on our way to heaven. We're happy about that. Praise God. I'm in Matthew 24. Turn there, will you? Uh, Matthew 24, <coughs> that's like the book of Revelation of the Gospels. I love it because I want to know. I not only want to know, I want to tell everybody I know, this is what to expect. This is what's going to happen. Uh, for about 25 years, you, you would know this, and uh, Pastor Mary, whether you would know this, for about 25 years or more, I've been warning the body of Christ about a very dark cloud that would come upon the earth. And, uh, and it's just like hardly, uh, I don't know, I think we preachers sometimes feel like Noah. We just keep laying it out there, bringing the warning, bringing the instruction. And, and you say, is anybody really taking this to heart? Is anybody really listening to what we're saying? Because the warning's there. We, no Christian should be caught off guard about what's coming and what's coming next. I'd like an amen on that, please. Matthew 24, let's locate ourselves for a minute. Verse 3. We're going right to verse 3. Help us, Lord. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately. There's a whole message in that right there, isn't there? Some people won't give the pastor hardly any time at all. They barely can get in and out of the church services. But Jesus built an entire global team, not by preaching to the multitude, but after the preaching to the multitude, he met in the back, in the garden, in the, and he expounded more clearly what he said to, to those out there. They asked him once, why do you speak in parables? And he said, because everybody gets to hear, but it's been given to you to understand. Now, if it took him, I don't know, an hour, 90 minutes, I don't know how long Jesus preached, you know, but let's just say 90 minutes. Well, if it took him 90 minutes to deal with all that in the public, and he's going to meet with the disciples, not everybody, the disciples, in, in a more private setting, and expound more clearly, it takes more time. And I'm fine, I found this out. I've been doing this. I've been, I've been working for God since the 1970s. And uh, this is, 2022 is my 50th year. It's my birthday of being born again. I met the Lord as a young Marine leader in Vietnam. I've never turned back. It's the greatest way to live on this planet is to walk with Jesus Christ. It really is, man. And so, you know, we're living today and we're realizing, wait a minute, this is it. This is the last days. So I keep saying, hey, everybody, you're going to have to spend a lot of time listening to your preacher, not skipping out. I'm preaching to you now, and you're here tonight, so just think about somebody who isn't. And so it's like, wait a minute, I can't get you in church more than once a week, once every two weeks. You're busy. You have a schedule. I'm not rebuking you. Just let me preach. And so I, you, you look at it, and you say, well, no wonder we have like half-baked Christians in some places, because they won't stick around. They won't come out. Uh, they, they, they don't want, they, they'll, they'll do the public meeting, but it's over. Let's go. We got things to do. That's not going to work if you want to be a true soldier of the cross. Uh, you can be truly born again, but man, the Lord's looking to build up his army. Can I have an amen on that? Amen. Well, back to the verses. Uh, it says here, uh, I mean, you can, you can preach forever in these verses. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, or you could say asking, tell us, when shall these things be? I get asked that all the time, and I'm far from Jesus. Most pastors are being asked this. What, so, what, how, what's going on? Uh, what, and, and they went on to say, what shall be the sign of, of, of your coming, Jesus, and of the end of the world? I had some really high public figures ask me, what do you think the end of the world will be? What do you think will cause the end of the world? They had their little list. Will it be world war? Will it be nuclear holocaust? What will it be? Uh, uh, what will destroy? What will, what will end the world? And I said, humans, rebelling against God, living in a nasty society, playing God, 
stabbing each other, shooting each other, hating each other, raping each other, stealing each other's children, cursing God, driving God out of church, driving God out of the courtroom, driving God out of the factory, driving God out of the schools. That's what will destroy the earth. A senator asked me this the other day, Brother Barclay, with all this stuff going on in the Ukraine, as a prophet, what do you see? Is there going to be global thermal nuclear war? I said, absolutely not. Write it down. How can you be so sure Putin is threatening? He's got nuclear weapons. Well, because I so I they don't like it when I do this. But I turned to the Bible in the Bible. Great. I turned to the Bible and I read him some verses about Gog and Magog. And the very not now, not not now. After seven years of tribulation and the battle of Armageddon, there'll be a Gog and a Magog and they get wiped out then. Not now. If there was a, a nuclear war now that would be global, you, you understand that we can wipe out Russia in 47 minutes. There will be no more Russia in 47 minutes from launch. Think about that. Not no more Putin, no more Russia and neighboring areas. And so that can't happen or the Bible's not true. How would there be a God? Because Gog is the leader of Magog. The word Magog means the land of Gog. Uh, it is very clear that right now Putin is Gog, G-O-G. And Russia is the land that he controls. The Bible's clear that he will rally nations. Welcome to the eschatology class. The Bible's clear that he will gather nations and he'll go after Israel. Now we don't know, will he do that by force and rebuild the Soviet Union or will there be a coalition of willingness to go after the Jewish people in Israel? Uh, you know, uh, it's not clear. What is clear is that he will gather nations and he will go after Israel. That is going to spawn a, a real global operation. But right now, if there was a nuclear war that went global, there'd be no more God to be there at the end of the tribulation period. And therefore, I present to you that it can't happen. Someone said, oh my, oh my God, Brother Barclay, what about the Antichrist? And uh, uh, am I, you think I, will we have to take the mark of the beast? I said, where would you put it? You have the mark of the Christ. Everybody knows. Your neighbors know. They see you go to church. They see you pray in the restaurant. You're marked. You're marked. That's why you don't want to miss the catching away of the church. Because we're the resistance. I hope you get this. I hope you get this truth, this point. The Antichrist cannot manifest and go into full motion while the church is on the planet. The Bible's clear on it. If we were doing a seminar seminar, I'd get all the verses out for you. The Bible's clear. We are the resistance. He cannot man Now, he might be born. I don't know right now. He might be raised. He might be the incarnate of Satan. But he cannot. The Bible says he'll rule one third of the earth, but he'll influence the globe. It seems to me like he's influencing a lot of churches already. Antichrist means anti-Christian. Hey, we're Americans. I think you're all American. If not, you're in America. Uh, we're Americans. And you know what? We have this really weird, unlawful, illegal, man-made rule called separation of church and state. Why does it say church and not religion? I'll tell you why. Because the church, the, no, one, no religion uses the word church but Christianity. So this isn't a target against religion. This is a target against Jesus Christ and the living church. Now, up in my state, you know, the second Nazi, you know, Germany, uh, during COVID, up in my state, um, you, you could easily see what we're talking about. They just took control. You do what you said, you go to jail. You, get, you go to your home or you go to jail. You can only go to certain stores, the ones that our governor chose. But worse than that, you could only buy what the governor said you could buy. I'm already saying Walmart. 
I made it through the door. I passed whatever test, and I get to shop. But they police taped off rows and rows of things that you could not buy, even though you're qualified to get in the store. Are you out there? These things aren't so far. Look at Canada. Canada's under siege. I think we lost Canada. Now I'm a Canadian ministry as well. But I, it looks like we've lost Canada now to full-blown dictatorship. Now they're talking euthanasia. That if They really are. I'm not making this up. It's not conspiracy theory. They're now talking about if you're too pe- poor to pay your way, that maybe the others in the government don't want to support you, so your, your footprint needs to leave the planet. Oh, they're serious about it. But they're not the only place. And in case you... Now, where I live, I can get to Canada in about an hour and a half in three different directions uh, if you wanted to go there. That's not so far from home. And this is going on in one of the greatest free nations of the world. Well, what will the sign be of his coming? They ask. What will be the end of the world? How will, what will this look like, Jesus? And as you read down, he, uh, the first thing out of his mouth is, make sure no man deceives you. Right. Now, Curtis, how many years have you been preaching this gospel? 46 years. Now, I know you. In 46 years, you've had plenty of people say to you, What? Where'd you get that from? Are you sure you're right? I don't know if pastor's right. I don't know. Uh, what if we get led astray? It's so, it's so dumb that people are basically dumb that do that. It's so dumb. Listen, what are you talking about? We're called to help you. Think about the others that are trying to deceive you. Jesus said, let no man deceive you. He wasn't talking about the Bible man. He wasn't talking about your preacher man. He's talking about philosophy, psychology, the rudiments of this world, the play preacher, the dead church, the polluted church, the placebo church. That's what he's referring to, that you don't get deceived. I'm going to help you with something. It's almost... Impossible, I said almost, it's almost impossible to be deceived if you live in your Bible and sit under a Bible preacher. Now, you can go to church forever and pay no attention, like make your grocery list, plan your vacation, be bored. I don't know. But I'm talking about Bible people who come to hear the word, you know. The Bible says, I think you know this, the Bible says, that faith comes by, Hearing. pardon me, Hearing. not seeing. You got to get this if you have it. Your ears are what has heavenly permission to extract faith when the scriptures are preached, but not your eyes. Faith does not come by seeing. You can read your Bible all day long. You still got to have the preacher. Thank you for your enthusiasm about my message. If you want to escape the bad stuff of the day, you better be listening to God. You better do what God said. Because God wrote a whole book to help you and me walk through the maze of the last days. Now, the Bible says this is the victory, or this this is what causes or brings the victory over this world, even our faith. Oh, you know this. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of God. But the other verses say, well, how would they hear without a preacher? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. And how would they preach unless they're sent? Okay, well, then what about the hireling? Paul said there's so many preachers in the last days, you can pile them up. You can heap them up. So that can't be it. So we couldn't legitimately say that everybody speaking, every public speaker, everyone who calls himself a prophet, prophetess, pastor, teacher, they're in the pulpit, they're on TV. They're, we, couldn't, we could not biblically legitimately say that all of them have been sent by God. So how do you get faith if you listen to a preacher that wasn't sent by God? Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. 
How will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach, in other words, to release faith unless he sent them? But what about all the preachers that were never chosen by God? The Bible's clear on it. We see it every day. The, the heretics, the hirelings. Uh, now there are, there are truly called preachers that just flat out blow it and cut themselves short, but maybe they were called. But what about, there's, there's dozens of preachers and teachers and prophetesses and prophets. I'm not the only one that just came through a prophetic disaster. When we needed the word of God coming out of the mouth of the two prophets, hardly nobody listened to the two prophets. They listened to the other prophets, and most of their prophecies did not come to pass. During COVID, during the election, some of them are still harping like it's going to come to pass. It's like, no, honey, you dated it. If God spoke it, he didn't make a date mistake. But they're still standing on it. So we understand that there could be false prophets, false prophecies, false teachers, false pastors. And you can listen to them all day long and probably be happy. I don't know. Laugh a lot. Like how pretty and preppy they are. And get no faith to overcome this world. Amen. And you get more and more anemic. And believers get weaker and weaker. So the darkness comes. The power comes. Mostly the filth begins to manifest and the church falls for it. Well, we just got to, we got to love everybody. Careful. You're supposed to walk in love with everybody. You love their soul. It's the soul you should love. Remember Amalek, if you know the story, uh, excuse me, um, uh, Jehoshaphat came back from the battlefield. The, uh, the king, because I want you to get the picture. The king came back from a very victorious battle. The prophet, it's in your Bible. The prophet of God met him at the gate of the city. And he stopped him and he said, The Lord God is against you because you chose both sides. Is that who you are? Do you go with whoever you're with? I'll just ask you a question. Don't answer it. Is adultery right or wrong? Is gay right or wrong? Is lesbian right or wrong? Is child molestation right or wrong? Is lying, stealing, and cheating right or wrong? See, if you say, if you say it's wrong, but then you go out there with them, we just got to love everybody and hold them close. And, and no, they're going to, uh, there's a lot of people according to this Bible that's going to hell and we're the rescuing voices. Can I have any amens on that at all? You'd think, yeah, I would think anybody that comes out on a Monday night would be ready to say amen, fight Fired up in God. Woohoo! Glory to God. <laughs> Let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. Now, what about, check this verse out. In um, Isaiah 66, you can just write it down if you want to, or they, they can put it up. I like, the, I like uh, this modern version. Isaiah 66, 3 and 4 goes like this. Pay attention, please. But those who choose their own ways, delighting in their detestable sins, I will send them great trouble. All the things they feared. For when I called, they did not answer. When I spoke, they did not listen. They deliberately sinned before my very eyes and chose to do what they know I despise. Now, I know it's an Old Testament verse, but God did not get saved at Calvary like modern teachers teach. That the God of the Old Testament, you know, he was a bad dude and he killed everybody that he didn't like and da 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 but the God of the New Testament doesn't care how you live. It doesn't matter. It's like, whoa, Jehovah had conversion at Calvary. But no, the Bible says he never changes. It says there's not even a shadow of turning in our God and who he is and what he is. So Father God did not get saved at Calvary. You did. Jesus did not die on the cross 
because Father God was a mean God and he needed help in order to... No, no, I've heard... They don't say it this way, but they should. They might as well because that's what they're saying. No. It, it's a, when, when pre, I don't care what preacher it is. When a preacher gives you permission to live contrary to this book, run and go find a holy man or woman that doesn't let you off the hook because God doesn't let you off the hook. He come for the forgiveness of sins, right? So I asked this young preacher, I won't say names because it, it's slanderous to him because he's such a goofball. But he's a very, 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 very famous goofball. So he taught that there was no damnation, there was no hell, that all hell was was how you felt when you had a bad day. Hell was in here. So I know him a little bit, you know. If he was ordained with me, I would have revoked his credentials on the spot as a heretic. But he's not. And so, but I know him. So I sent him a text while he was preaching. I just happened to clip it. And I sent him a text. And I said, call me later. And he did. And I said, I have a question for you. <clears throat> There's no hell, you said. No, not, not like what you preach, Dr. Barclay, you old preachers. Oh, um, I see. You, he says, you're from the old school. I said, L let me help you, baby doll. There's only one school of the Bible. It don't matter your age. It don't matter if it's, if it's the 1600s or 2022. There's only one. Just one school of the Bible. Amen. And so I said, listen, so I guess, let me, let me just ask you, son, do you believe that Jesus was the Savior? Yeah, Doc, you know I do. So you believe he came to the earth to save you? Yes, I do. Okay, from what? What did he come for? Save you from what? There's no damnation, there's no hell. Hey, if there's no hell, then there's no reason for accountability. If you don't have to give an account, then there's no reason to be responsible. And if you don't have to be responsible enough to give an account because it could adjust your eternity, then, then why are there any rules? Rules don't count anymore. And that's what modernists are preaching. And you want to be... Re the reason I would bring this up, none of them are in this room. The reason I would bring this up is it seems to me like a lot of the body of Christ is rejecting the truth preachers and are attracted to the preppy and pretty and groomed preachers. You don't have to say amen. I'm going to preach it anyhow. Let no man deceive you. But now what about this Isaiah verse I just gave you? These, uh, these couple of verses. What? Because they chose to do what God despises? Do you know why there's an Old Testament Bible? Because the New Testament tells you. Because God saved all of the lessons, stories of the Old Covenant. For you, because there wasn't, hear me, hear me, man, because there was, God knew there wasn't enough time between the time Jesus died on the cross and the end of the age to repeat thousands of years of people trying to walk with God and dealing with the enemies of God. So he preserved enough of the old stories so that you would know the heart of God and what he goes for. And what he doesn't. Well, Brother Barclay, I heard a preacher say, don't you read the Old Testament. That's the law. Oh, so you're under the law because you read it? But the same preachers are saying, don't read the red letters. <coughs> They're not for you. I'm glad you all looking like you never heard this before. <laughs> now those same group of preachers, I just heard them say this. Uh, myself. Now they're saying you better be careful reading the Pauline epistles because Paul was really harsh and a lot of the things he said isn't for you. For example, they say, oh, it, that was just Paul writing to the church at Galatia, but you're not that church. <clears throat> no, 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 no. The Bible was preserved, all of it. So you and I know what on earth we're dealing with, the thoughts of God, and how to survive the last days. Amen. Say, thank God for my Bible. <clears throat> One more time. Thank God for my Bible. Just say it. Thank God for my Bible. 
Now, man, you know, man's really, man has really come up with some brilliant things. They think they're going to fix the planet. So I have a couple of global leaders, because I'm a global minister. I'm all over the world. And then I have a couple of American leaders. Again, I won't say their names because I don't want them. Just because they're that stupid doesn't mean I need to play, display their stupidity. Uh, saying that honestly and with humility. So I don't say names. But uh, I, I ask one of them, listen, you're like Senator Green. You know, you're, you're going to save the planet. So I said, I got, I got, there's something I must tell you. He goes, what is that? So I read him the verses where it says, God is going to destroy this earth. That includes America. And then there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. So good luck trying to save it. Amen. Maybe you've never been to like Shanghai, Hong Kong, the Philippines, for example. Before you get off the aircraft, your eyes burn from the pollution. You can see as you land, the air is orange. They do nothing, it seems, to clean the air. Guess where the air's coming? To America. Golly gee, Gomer. Remember the earthquake and the tsunami a few years back that happened in Japan? And it was 10 days. It only took 10 days for nuclear element to be found in the airspace in the state of Washington from the wind. 10 days. So we're going to do all this to save the air and save the planet when no one else is. And the wind. So we're going to clean our air and have it go where? To Europe while all this air is coming here? Oh, I'm, I'm not for destroying the nation. Don't take me wrong. But God's going to. Man has some really weird ways. For example, maybe you know this, maybe you saw this. There's an organization, you can go look it up yourself so you don't, because when I say this, you're going to think I'm making it up. But I'm not. So there's an organization. Uh, it's the International, um, you know, Environmental Agency. International Environmental Agency. There's also another group called the International Energy Agency. These are for real. These two agencies, their job, their duty, the reason they exist is to advise all countries what to do about certain things. Right now, the International Energy Agency has got together and they put out, I think it was their 10 points of what every country must do now that we're in an oil crisis. Did you know when they first started, they called it an oil shortage? Then they found out that there is no shortage. They found, they changed this themselves. They decided, wait, 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 there's no shortage. Even in America, we got more oil here than you'll ever spend in the next three lifetimes. And so they said, oh, we're being challenged too hard. There really is oil because we're buying it from our enemies. So, we're, you know, I don't want to be just critical, but where's that oil going? Who gets to buy that oil that's coming from Russia and, the, and, and Arabia? Because they are buying it by the millions of gallons, barrels. So why is our gas not going down? Uh. And so they, they, the International Energy Agency Association, Pastor, they put out there are 10 things that every country must do to stop the oil crisis. Because there is a crisis. Man-made, just like COVID, was a real disease. They just flung, they hung all the flags recently in America at half mass when the one millionth person died in America because of, of COVID. So we don't make light of COVID. We understand. However, the demon that came here with it from China made us do this to the, go to the government. Yes, governor. Yes, mayor. Yes, store owner. Yes, president. 
and that's and it's still going on. I'm not just being critical. It's the it's the day we live in. So this was my point. The one I think it's number five on their list. The ten things uh, we mu if you want to stop the oil crisis, we have to stop all vehicle traffic on Sundays. On Sundays, and especially in major cities. Do not take my word for it. You, I know it sounds flimsy. You should go to their own website. It's a government agency type website. And you can get all ten points. It's not the only foolish one. But it's the one I want to make a point with. Why is it that it's Sunday? Why not Saturday? I kind of see what they're saying Monday through Friday is when most people work and they got to get kids to school. And, and I, I kind of I get that. But what about Saturday? Why are we stopping? Why is the advice to stop vehicles on Sunday? Because that's when church people go to church. Now, when our governor first put the, the thumb on the state of Michigan, that's where I'm from, uh, I'm going to church. Now, you're not supposed to leave your house. I'm going out to church to do Zoom meetings, you know. And uh, on my way out there, I drove by a store called Lowe's. That's like a lumber yard improvement center, you know. I drove by there, and I can't help but I looked over. Uh, David, I'll bet you there was 150 cars at Lowe's on Sunday morning when we can't have church or you go to jail. So I went down to my freeway ramp, turned around, drove back, got off, went over, I went into Lowe's. So I thought, well, may, maybe they're having church at Lowe's. I don't know. It's Sunday. So I stepped into Lowe's. There's people everywhere. So I yelled at them. Y'all get to church, you heathens! Got dead quiet. So the little lady at the counter says, they know me. Reverend Barclay. I said, where, is your, where are the masks? I thought we're under a mask mandate. You let people in here without masks? Oh, my God. Of course, I didn't have one. Huh? But <laughs> did you check their temperature at the door? Well, you know, yeah. So I, I, I got a hold of the governor's office. Why can we sell two by fours and nails and screws, but we can't go to church? And you, and you couldn't. Then, stick with me a minute. Then our governor said, well, there'll be no penalty against you preachers for going to church. I said, well, how's that going to work? Uh, I don't get fined for going to church, but anybody who leaves their home could get arrested and fined, especially if they're going to church. See what we're talking about? Uh, I have a lot of churches in California. Actually, I have a lot of churches everywhere, but to, for this illustration, the church in California called me. He's one of my men. He said, Dr. Barclay, I think I'm being arrested. I said, well, first of all, you know, you don't normally think you are. You either are or you aren't. It's like, well, make it a little plainer. He goes, well, I invited my key leaders over to my house. There's myself, my family, and about four other car full of people. And we're having a little Bible study, and we're going we're gonna to have a meeting at my house to determine what we're going to do as a church, being we can't have church. I said, yeah. I said, well, our neighbors get paid for turning us in. So they called the authorities, and they get paid money. So the authorities came out, and they say they're going to arrest me, and then they're going to fine or penalize every person who left their home to come to this Bible study meeting. I said, yeah, I, I, I'm sure that's true. He said, well, here's the problem. Like four houses down, they're having like a, uh, like a Tupperware party, like a cookware thing. It wasn't Tupperware, he said. But that, that's where. And so he said, I'll, he said, I'll bet you there's 12, 15, 18 cars lined up and down that street. There's probably a good 25 or more people in that house and not one cop. He said, they're not trying to stop COVID. They're trying to shut down the church. Well, COVID's kind of over. Now they'll, you know, the COVIDites, uh, you know, like Amalekites and Canaanites and the COVIDites, 
They're going to be back again, wait till the autumn, and they'll have a whole new deal. Isn't it amazing? Do you know why it's called COVID-19? Why 19? See, I went to school. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. It's called 19 because there were others that didn't get you arrested, that they didn't exaggerate, that they didn't overreach, and there'll be one coming this autumn. Did you notice the flu has disappeared? There's no flu. So they say, <laughs> now, I know, now I know I'm being just critical. But someone said, you are being critical. I said, that is exactly right. I'm dealing with that. But, but we're not deaf, dumb, and blind. And it's not because we're Americans only. It's because we're Bible people. Okay? So, no, let's stop all vehicle traffic on Sundays. So what do you think that's aimed at? Church again. Church again. Now, just to, just to help us understand the nonsense and how delusional people are that, that aren't listening to God, say delusional. Because that's what it is. The Bible says so. Thessalonians says, because they no longer love the truth, that's the Bible. Because they no longer love the truth, they were turned over to a lying spirit. That they should, uh, you know, a delusion, so they would believe the lie. A lying demon doesn't just teach you to lie, it teaches you to believe a lie. It teaches masses of people to believe a lie and swear to God, it's the truth. Wow. So, they're delusional. Here's just one little illustration. Can I go another couple minutes? Okay, here's a little illustration. Okay. The other agency, the environmental experts... They put out, I think they had eight things. You can go on their website. It's, it's legit. And, uh, and, and one of their suggestions to all nations, even America, is that by 2035, we must teach Americans to stop eating so much meat. Yeah. Why? They were asked. Because cows, pigs, and chickens toot and give off gas. And if we can eliminate people from eating so much meat, we won't have to have as many cows, pigs, and chickens and other things, turkeys, whatever. Seriously, go, this is the organization telling the whole world what to do in order to save the planet. And even much of the body of Christ is fallen for it. What a sad day in Mayberry. When we have the Bible, that's the truth. And they're not, listen, I'm 70 years old. And in my 70 years, America alone has spent multiple billions of dollars in research trying to cure diseases. And how many have they cured in my lifetime? Do you know? None. Now, I, wait a minute. I hope they keep spending billions of dollars. And I hope they keep researching. And I hope they come up with some cures. I do. My point is, if you're depending on the laboratories, and you don't know God, and you don't have God, and you're not obeying God, and you're just waiting for them to come up with a cure, tell me where you live and we'll do your funeral for you. Or how about the government? You, are you really relying on the government? Don't even go to who's the president. Don't go there. We're not talking about who, we're not talking about the, the person of. Most people running for the president is a diversion to get you to swallow the whole platform of what that platform believes in because you like or don't like the front person who is running for office. It's probably true with governorship, mayorship, etc. The longer I preach, the quieter you get. <laughs> it's the day we live in. There's something wrong with us if we ignore it. We gotta wake up, guys. We can't just swallow this stuff. You know, I know sometimes you don't have a lot of choice, 
but your belief system is up to you. No one can change your beliefs. No one can take your God out of your heart. And no one can really stop you from walking with your God. They can mess with church attendance. They can mess with rule. But, but no one can take your Christianity from you. Can I have an amen, please? Yeah. Yeah. So the world... The world out there, think about it. Your relatives, maybe, your friends, the people that live, live next to you, the people you shop with, they're in the same grocery store you are. The list goes on. This is all they got. The government, the pharmaceutical, you know, laboratories, the money people, and the list goes on. And none of it works anymore. None of it works anymore. So the good news is, we are now, in 2022, coming down to the only hope we have is God. And you know, there, there are people in all, all political parties. There are people, sinners and saints alike, we'll say. They're beginning to realize this can't be fixed without God. I'm picking up God things even in the press, even in the liberal press. Now, they're not preaching the gospel, but it's amazing how they say the Bible says, or they quote a verse, or they refer to God. And this whole thing with teachers, listen, America should have learned a long time ago. Don't tick off mama. Mad women are bad news. Do you know America tried for years to make drunk driver laws and pretty much failed until mad? Mothers Against Drunk Driving. When those moms got ticked off, every state started making rules. Judges started running for their lives. Don't tick off mom. And right now, this pushback on schools and school boards, trying to tell mamas, dads too, but when you tell a mama she has no say over her babies, get ready to have your eyes clawed out. But that, that, that alone is going to change our nation. Have you noticed the kickback? This is my alarm. Sorry. <laughs> it really was my alarm. Uh, are you noticing the kickback right now, the backlash? Let's just talk about it for 30 seconds. Imagine a governor, a, how, a state house, state senate, tells an organization like Disney, you're done. You went too far when you propagated that you would teach uh, un untraditional sexual education to children and keep it hidden from parents. Maybe you do, and maybe you don't know the magnitude. There's a reason it's called the magic kingdom, because they had kingdom laws. They just didn't get a tax break. And when that governor and those other leaders pulled that from them, it sent a shockwave. Think about this. Exxon Mobil, one of the largest global operations on this planet, after the Florida Disney thing, they came out and said, this time around there'll be no gay flags, no transgender pennants, don't even dress like you want, basically, because we're not going to celebrate that anymore at Exxon. They were, a, they were a champion for that. We're starting to see a really big backlash. Amen. So Florida passes an anti-abortion law. I don't know where you stand on that, but I don't know where I stand. And then Texas, they pass an anti-abortion law. It doesn't matter. Think about it. Everybody's all up in an uproar about Roe versus Wade could be reversed. Where? That it's not already being reversed. Oh, I hope they do it because it's ridiculous for our country to just give anybody permission to kill a baby. And maybe you know this, maybe you don't. Sorry to be the news update guy today, but I'm just talking about backlash. Mr. Trump, I don't even know what you think about him, but Mr. Trump, uh, he literally presented this. If a baby in a mother's womb is not a baby and it's not alive until it's born, I want every prisoner released from prison that's ever been charged with double homicide when they killed a pregnant woman. 
I want all the court system to go back, and I want all these court cases uh, changed. I want the judges relieved because if that baby, like if there was a car accident and the drunk driver killed the mama that was pregnant and he got charged with double homicide, how could that be if that's not a real baby? So he said, I want all this reversed. I want, and you know, the courts that would, wow, that would flood everything, the courts. And so that initiated all the attention of, wait a minute. Now, I'm not talking about that. I'm not even a voice for that. I'm not even a woman. <laughs> Thanks for noticing that. It's really important to me that that's noticeable. I'm not representing that. I'm talking about backlash. I'm talking about a payback. I'm talking about a pushback. The Los Angeles Times, for the first time probably in my whole lifetime, just endorsed one of the most conservative people running for county controller in the county of Los Angeles. You may not know the impact of that. That is a big, 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 big item. And so we could go on, but it's out of time. But there's a, there's a whole list that God and America even is saying, no more of that. And no more of that. And you pushed this too far. And you shouldn't have gone that far. And you know what's happened? The blatant evil sinners have overplayed their hand. And most of us have been praying, no matter what party you're talking about, please don't go there. Because if you think all conservatives are angels, we need to slap you in the back of the head or something. We're not, we're not, this isn't political. I'm talking about spiritual things. So if the church now would rise up, if we got rid of all of our flimsy little doughboy, you know, preacher, teacher people, that are, they're, they're against this Bible. I don't know what they're doing in the pulpits and on TV. What if we could, you can't, but what if you could shuffle them aside and then the real true Bible voices and the real true Bible churches stood up and said enough is enough. Our God won't permit this anymore. Do you know what would happen? It would turn. Now, I got one more thing to tell you. Is that okay? Can you do one more thing? Are you sure? Really? You're right, David. He said, they're tough. You can do anything you want to, Doc. This church is tough. But you're right about that. You were wrong about the ability to say amen around here. But you were right about them being tough. Praise God. Amen. There's a verse in Deuteronomy, two verses, and God said to the people, the, the, his people coming out of Egypt, God said, remember how Amalek, the beginning king that birthed the uh, Amalekites, that Amalek, uh, Amalek met you in the way, the way that you know, the path coming out of Egypt, and he attacked the hindermost parts of you. The word there is straggler. He said the weak and the feeble and the straggler is who the enemy attacked. Not the soldiers, not the strong families that were marching together, the stragglers. Now, you know, I, uh, I'm a combat Marine. I train Marines to do certain things after I come home from Vietnam at, out at Camp Pendleton. And you know, when we were, when we were, we trained a lot in the Philippines. That was like our sub base before sometimes we ran new missions to Vietnam because the terrain and the heat and the conditions. And so we would run probably past there probably 10 miles a day, 120, 125 on the thermometer, probably about 150 to 160 on the tarmac the, coming off that asphalt. And we would still run 10 miles a day. And ever so often, now just let me finish with this illustration. Ever so often, he is strong. Now I'm talking about elite Marines, not, not even general troops. These are special forces guys. They're, they're, they're like super fit. And we'd run in. And ever so often, just before we head into the finish line, we would look back and there'd be a straggler. Tough as that Marine was, the heat got him. 
Something was going on in his body, and he start, he's trying, but he started to fall back. And there was a space now between him and the last guy of the group. Now, when you're out jogging for fun, big deal. We got some water waiting on you, keep going. If you're in combat, he's dead, and half of us are dead. That's how serious of a matter it is not to be a straggler. There's a reason for it. So we would turn the whole group around, and we'd go back, and we would collect that guy straggling, and we'd say, come on, we all go in together. That wasn't to be cool. We, we Marines stick together. That wasn't it. It was to teach that in the real combat situation, you straggling behind could cost others their lives and cost you their lives. So we forcefully trained that way. Well, God said in Deuteronomy, Amalek attacked the weak, the feeble, and those that were straggling behind. That's probably, in 2022 language, the church skippers. You can, nowadays, you can miss one church service and have no idea where that church went during that Sunday or midweek service. And then you try to catch up the next week and pretend like you didn't miss anything. But you did. You missed movement. Who knows what God did, what God said. Amen. Now I know I'm preaching better than you're saying amen. Some of you are looking like me. Why don't you just shut up and obey your alarm and get out of here? The straggler. You don't want to be the straggler. Back to Jesus. You don't want to be the one that's deceived by all this foolishness. Not ready for his coming. Left behind. Can't, can't, he, listen. One guy said, well, I believe, Brother Barclay, that uh, we're, we're not going in the rapture. I believe we're going in the tribulation period or, or we're going through it or part of it. I said, son, okay, if that's what you believe. I'll give you one day. I'll, when the church is gone, I'll give you one day. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, when the church is relieved from the earth, demons are going crazy. Satan is going crazy. The Antichrist is going to appear. And, and you can't beat the demons that keep you out of church. You can't beat the demons that stop you from gossiping on social media. You can't beat the demons that stop you from stealing the tithe. All these years, you haven't made up your mind on the tithe yet. You're dealing with these little pipsqueak, first grade demons that don't even have the right weapons. And you think you're going to contend with them during the tribulation period, I said, I changed my mind. I don't give you a day. I'll give you less than an hour. This is for real. We live in a day that's never been more for real. And the preachers, the true pastors are working as hard as we know how to get you ready, not only for his coming, but to be able to repel all this nonsense and be the soldiers that God wants you to be. Can I have an amen on it? If you receive it from me, clap real good. Come on. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray over every one of us, everybody streaming, even those who get this recording later. Lord, I pray over us. We are ferocious. We're not the weak ones. We're not broken down. We're not lost. We're not, we're not deceived. We, we, we got it figured out because we have a Bible. We know what to do because we have a preacher in our life that isn't playing games with our life. We have a church that means business. It's holy. It's strong. It's established. It's stable. And we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, help every one of us. Now hear me, I'm praying over you. Help every one of us to go get our relatives, our family, our loved ones our neighbors, people we work with, even strangers. Because if we don't, Lord, there is nobody that will do it. There is nobody left. You, you don't have a second army. It's us or they go to hell. It's us now, Lord, or people are going to hell. Because no other re religion is going to re reach them with salvation. They're not going to find it on their own, Master. So I say... I humbly ask you to empower us, the blood-washed believers. It's not right, Lord, that we would have all this and enjoy it while people all around us fall down 
and, and go to hell and, and are damned forever. So I say anoint. Raise a hand at me, Lord. Anoint every one of us to be loud and to be bold in the name of Jesus and to reap souls like never before. Give us that, I pray. Give us divine favor and supernatural anointing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you for it. Amen and amen and amen. David, I love you. Don, I love you. I'm very proud of you. I'm proud to stand with you. And this building, wow. This building is awesome, man. Amen. Yeah, I got a tour before church. Yeah, pretty cool. Isn't God good? Isn't it great to be a Christian? Amen. Now, don't go home and pout and whine and pine and be depressed and discouraged because there are idiots in this life. You go home and say, I'm on my way to heaven. And it looks like it's getting really close. Really close. Amen. Oh, come on. I'm preaching again. Clap again. Come on. Thank you for tuning in to hear the word of God from our ministry. We would love for you to come and fellowship with us. Join us on Sunday at 1030 a.m. and on Wednesdays at 7.15 p.m. for our midweek Bible study. We are located at 7020 Frost Avenue in Columbia, South Carolina. We pray that you stay connected with us through our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. If we blessed you through today's word and you feel led to sow a seed into our ministry, you can give directly through our website at www.visitacc.org or by mail at P.O. Box 957, Irmo, South Carolina, 29063. You can also use our secure platform pushback. Just text AMBSCC to 833-438-9555. Here at Ambassadors Christian Center, we want to remind you that God loves you and so do we. We pray that the Lord blesses you and keeps you, that he makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, that he lifts his countenance upon you and gives you peace in the mighty name of Jesus.